All right, where's my eye line? Oh, right over there by that open arc. Got ah, you sly devil. Ah! I'm okay, everyone. Hey, Action Movie Dad here, and you're looking great today. Welcome to VFX SideQuest, where we create something fast and fun. Today we're exploring this face-meltingly cool technique that can be used, among other things, to melt faces. First off, I was 100% inspired by Production Crate's amazing post here, where they hacked content aware Phil to create a convincing and magic texture projection with one of their assets. Now David made a more in-depth video of that technique here, so please check that out. I remember the few times I saw this accidentally done with content aware Phil. Like when Seth Worley tried to erase Jeff Goldblum from this shot and got this weird thing. Now, can we get this surprisingly cool data mashi effect to happen on purpose? Let's ask the man himself. Hey, content aware Phil. Hey dude, what can I do for you? Can we fake some projection mapping based on just some plain old footage? Great idea. Here's what I'll need. I like motion vectors and warping stuff along them. So if you give me some footage that has some nice perceptible motion but fake me out with a single frame of something right before I start filling in, then I'll use these vectors on this image. Alright, I get it. So method one is kind of like texture projection. You use a video that has the motion you want, but then on just one frame, you add something on top. Then you block out that general region for the rest of the video with something like a solid on silhouette alpha. And then you set your start point to contain just this one frame, and then the hole appears on the next frame. Now when you run content aware fill on surface mode, to some extent fill will track this one frame forward onto the rest of the motion of that footage. The image kind of fades out over this wonky track, but I discovered a hack where you can ping pong the footage placing identical frames at the beginning and end, and ending up with a much more high quality solution, if you ask me. In method two, is you take a piece of footage or a still that doesn't really have any motion, and you place something with obvious motion in front of it. Then, you use that same element to cut a hole in your image, using duplicate and silhouette alpha as the blending mode. And then same as before, you allow the first frame to serve as an image reference, and then run content aware fill on surface mode. Now because content aware fill uses the alpha to determine where the holes in the image are, the process returns a full alpha. Now if you'd like to be able to utilize the alpha of just this distorted piece, you'll need to use a keyable color and a kind of a wider hole. That way, the resulting fill layer can now be keyed back to that custom alpha, if you need. Remember that for later. Alright, enough learning. On to the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's melt some faces with the Template of Doom. Film yourself in a medium close-up on a green screen or keyable surface. Don't listen to this confused man. Stare directly into the open arc and perform a scared scream. Bring that cursed footage into the template of Doom and place it inside comp number one. Align the apex of your scream with the 10 second mark. Now, spoiler alert, it grabs a freeze frame here, so keep that in mind while you're filming. Now on to comp two. As it's labeled, this is supposed to be your keyed character, so do your keying in here. Now just for fun, After Effects is automatically trying to guess what your screen color is and keying you out, but this could also be a totally wrong guess, and it'll look much better if you just key it out nicely with Primat keyer anyway. Now comp three is the most fun. The ancient knights who protected this comp left two markers. Go to the first marker, and here you can position and rotate this stand-in skull till it's nicely aligned with your footage. Twirl open this control null, and you'll see that there's an adjustment for the jaw open amount, so go ahead and set that too. And then who could miss this Mr. Potato Head version of you right here? If the alignment seems off, the skull position null also has a few small sliders to adjust it. The most important part is the eyes, really. And now, on to the second marker, where all you have to do is uh, position this little gross neck stump, and some of that splatter will come along right with it. Now, Comp 4 has the instructions right there on the screen. Open your Content-Aware Fill window if it's not already, 
and then match these settings, and then click Generate Fill Layer. This is a good time to take a little break. All right, wake up. Probably didn't actually take too long, but it gave us this horrifying thing. Now in the background, this template's actually gonna run some extracting and vector blur on it later, so it can look good in comp number five. Where particular does its turn your face into stretchy pizza cheese thing, which are then ported into comp six, the combiner, the full combination of everything working together. There are three labeled adjustment layers in here that give the otherwise still pose a bit of life. And you can mess with them or just disable them altogether, whatever you want. You can also pre-render this unfortunate soul if you like. I would suggest a compressed TIFF sequence with alpha. You don't have to, but it'll save you a bit of time in comp seven, the super comp special. This comp is just a sample scene in case you want to wrap it up right here. It comes complete with a fractal noise column of fire that uh, affects this drop shadow and fake rim light a little bit. Go ahead and trim up your footage, export, and then share your results with us. But wait, you have questions? I don't have time for questions. Just, just take the free template. Okay, you're a curious student. I like that about you. So I'm going to come back inside for a second and answer a few of your questions. So let's do some archaeology together, shall we? A lot of secrets of this template are buried deep within this folder right here, or by the shy switch right here. They're loosely numbered by which primary comp they help out. First off, this automatic keying is done by a sample image expression. I sample the image in this top corner of the screen where I'm guessing no one's face is, and then apply that to a linear color key. And like I said before, it's not as good as doing the key on your own footage, but it's a handy expression to know. It's one I also used to guess the skin midtones in this hidden comp. That color gets expression linked to these places. This comp really feels like it does a lot of automated things, but really it's the skull and neck placement comp where we get a lot of our info. Of course, this gives us a starting point for our skull animation, which is actually just a Cinema 4D file rendered in Mirror, like we've used before. But this placement guide also helps us know how to circle the head in this other comp. And then that image gets recentered and stretched out and then applied as a layer in the skull's animated texture. The rest of the texture as we scroll here is pretty straightforward. It's just a few copies of this drippy blood card that I made in particular. It's very basic, just a sphere emitting a handful of particles that have gravity turned on with a bit of turbulence, and a second system of particles with no velocity or gravity emitting from those parent particles. This same technique is used to generate the fake motion in our content-aware fill comp, except instead of a sphere emitter, I'm using a layer emitter. So here's what Phil's comp actually looks like. It's one frame of your head, followed by an immediate overlay of this drippy pattern. And just as we learned, this fools fill into creating this. It's all happening on top of this green solid so I can key it out, add some extract keyframes and some vector blur to make it look just like this. But we're not done with particular systems yet. This comp five uses your face as a layer emitter. Along with that content aware fill stretchy pizza skin, and then also some of these blobs. Possibly the most complicated effect of all. What else we got? This column of fire is just some fractal noise, and the sparks, well, they're just CC ball action. Uh, but you know, they're nothing like this ball action. There's all sorts of other hidden gems and expressions around this here template of doom, so here. Throw me the whip, I'll throw you the template. The assignment is simple. Use the template, explore the template, and then find us online and share your amazing results with us. If you have any other questions, I will be in my office for the next 90 minutes. And then after that, probably on Twitter for, for an unhealthy amount of time. I love you all. Now go make something cool, will ya? <laughs>